So we've talked about uh, the value of boards. These are ways to organize your content on Pinterest. Well, right now I have no content in these two boards. So there's a couple of ways now to add content. We can upload something directly to Pinterest, or we can link something from our website. What I really like about Pinterest is that either way, you can get, uh, you can, you can have, Pinterest has a really good system of link attribution. That's just a fancy way of saying that it'll have a link back to your website. Relatively easy. It doesn't on Pinterest, I mean, on Twitter and Facebook and Google sometimes. But the great thing about Pinterest is that if your link is attached to that um, pin, it will spread about, it'll spread up out over to Pinterest a lot easier. So to actually add something, here's a couple of ways to do it. If you open a board first, let's say Yummy Recipes, I'm in the board, and within the board, I can add a pin. Let's say I'm not in the board. Let's say I went back to the to the main Pinterest screen. Let's try it this way. Go back to the main Pinterest screen, your home, uh, your home screen here, and at the top right corner, you have a plus symbol. Click plus. And you've got pin from a website, upload from computer, create ad. So there it's sort of telling you ads, okay? But then we've got pin from website, upload from computer. Let's first look at upload from computer. Upload from computer. So, okay, choose an image. I've got a few sample pictures for you. And again, if this is a test site, it doesn't matter what we upload. But if you don't want to upload our test pictures, just watch for a moment. I'm going to choose image. I've got these sample test pictures for you to use on the left side column here. You can go into pictures, scroll all the way up to the top and select pictures, and then we have sample pictures. So I'm trying to choose a picture. It's under, on the left side, pictures. It's under libraries, pictures, sample pictures, and just any picture. I'm just going to pick whatever. None of these matter for my company, but I'll select jellyfish. It's going to upload it, and then it's going to say, here's your picture, give a description, and pick a board. Now be careful here. Don't pick the board before adding a description, because it'll just put it. I want a description, and then I want to pick a board. I, I wish they would make this a little bit more intuitive. I wish they would give you a little check mark. Because as soon as you click one of these boards, it'll take you out of the screen, and it puts it up there. The point is, I want to add a description with sentences and keywords and such for when people search, they can find this pin. So here, I would write the description and say, you know, easy to make cake recipe with jellyfish jelly. So I want to add some description. I can write as much as I want, but I wouldn't be writing a huge paragraph of stuff here. This is the same as other social media. A little bit to entice people to click, so you're going to get impressions, and then they're going to click conversions. And once they click is where you do the sale and such, which I'll show in a moment. But here, some picture, little text, and then select the board. And if I don't have a board for this particular one, I can create one at this moment. When I've got lots of boards, instead of scrolling and scrolling, I can search my boards. So let's say this wants, I'm going to put this under yummy recipes, sure. So as soon as you click either the pin it button or just the word, it'll put it there. So again, don't, don't um, select the board until you write some text. After you do that, then it might give you a pop-up like this. Yours might be different, and it goes away in a moment, I believe. But here now it's saying, you've uploaded this. You might be interested in that. See, and then it went away. So if you see that, nice. If you don't see it, that doesn't matter. The point of that is, as you add stuff to Pinterest, it'll suggest, you added this, why not like that? Well, I don't care. But for other people, yes, I love that. Other people are going to pin something, and then maybe mine will show up for them just like I saw on mine a moment ago. So you're active, you're sharing, you're pinning, and then you're gonna, people are going to see your stuff. Let me add another one. So we'll do the same thing again. On the top right corner, click the plus sign. 
I'll do another upload from computer. It's very straightforward, isn't it? Choose image. There's my picture. Open it. I add a description first. Uh, take a trip to where would this be? This maybe Arizona. Take a trip to Arizona and try out this amazing local recipe. Which amazing local recipe? The one that I'm going to add in the description right here. HTTP colon slash slash victorsbakery.com slash recipe slash az.html whatever. I'm adding a link also into my description. I don't just have to put text. Text gets me found. Text gets me impressions and the picture gets me impressions. But what gets me conversions? Something to do, a call to action. What I write here to entice people to click. So now, actually, I'm going to select another. I'm going to create a board at this point. Sure, I'll select that. This will be local recipes. So I, I created a board on the spot and it automatically put it there. And then it suggests, well, you might also like this content or you might want to promote this. It goes away in a moment and we can get it back later. But other people will see this too. When other people share on Pinterest and someone shared one of these cake recipes, maybe my own cake recipe will appear because what they shared had these keywords that they wrote that mine also has those keywords. To see what you did, I'm going to go back to my logo and click my profile. And now I'm starting to fill my profile with content to entice people to follow me or my boards. And I recommend this. I like to do this. Maybe it's a little bit of OCD, but I like to do this and I recommend it. You have these boards that you're creating, and I said create three boards, five boards, whatever. But then I also recommend for you to populate them with four things, because each picture then fills up one of these empty spaces. And I'm not very enticed to follow a board that only has one thing. I want to add four things, five things, whatever, so that these little boxes are not empty, so that people see, oh, interesting things to follow. So I might create three, three, three boards, but I actually want to pin 12 things. Sounds like a lot, but you're going to see that you can, uh, you don't always have to share your own things. You can share other people's things. You can do that on Twitter. You can do a retweet, sharing someone else's thing. You can do that on, on Google Plus, share someone else's. On all of these networks, you can share someone else's. I wouldn't rely on that. I would really be sharing your own unique content as much as possible, like 80% of the time. 20% of the time you can share other people's stuff, but it's it's about you, isn't it? This business page is about your company. So um, I've shared a few things. I've uploaded a few things. If if someone let's say they found it, they they looked under the foot under the food and my thing shows up here along with everyone else's but people are sharing all the time so it might not show up right away or it might go away so let's say um, someone visits my profile and they see my stuff here and they click on the board and they'll see it that's why this is big a big difference from Twitter and such because your stuff will always be here always be organized people can come back and view it you share 10,000 things those things will be in these different boards you know, there is, you still have to kind of browse around to find the exact thing or do search. But it's organized, unlike tweets, unlike Pinterest, I mean, unlike Google+, unlike Facebook. And so when someone sees this pin, okay, great, they look at it, it's a little preview, they can click on it, they see it larger, that's nice. It's other recommendations of stuff, great. Well, 
Pinterest is showing other people's jellyfish photos and nature photos and such. Um, the cool thing about this is that Pinterest is doing this for you too. I shared a photo of a cookie and someone is looking at someone's cookie photos and they look at it here and then they get suggestions. What about these other cookie photos? And one of them is my cookie photo. A person could look at your content and then pin it. The pin it means that basically sharing it. They're taking my thing and they're sharing it to their people. I want that. I want my pins to reach more people. My tweets reach more people. My Google Plus posts to reach more people. Share. This is how you share other people's stuff. When I'm up here browsing Pinterest and I see this, and this would look great on my board, I can click pin it. It says, where would you like to pin it? Would you like to edit the description? Where would I want to pin it? Recipes. Great. I just shared someone else's stuff on my board. That's not stealing. That's not cheating. That's social media. But you're going to think about it in terms of 80% your original con content, 20% someone else's. Most of the time it's your stuff. And sometimes it's other people's stuff. The purpose of that is I don't have any, I don't have an idea what to post this week. Let me share someone else's. Uh, I'm going to share this. I'm going to share someone else's. 45 useful wedding favors. And I can edit what they wrote. I can go in here and add to it, delete it. I can take it all out if I want and write my own thing. And you might say, that's horrible. Someone's going to remove what I wrote. Yes and no. Yes, they will remove this, but no, they cannot re delete the original link, the link back to your website. And that's the most important thing. That's where I'm making that sale. So that's what I'm saying about Pinterest is great with link attribution. You know, if, I, if someone retweets my tweet, they can edit my tweet so that they can take out my, my, my link. Pinterest... So you can use your website on every picture you post? Basically, okay. yeah. Use your website or, or the link directly to that product. You can do that too. And therefore, if someone repins, if someone shares your pin and deletes everything you wrote and tries to claim it as their own, it still has a link back to your website. The good and the bad about this is, let's say I shared my own original photo of the of, of that location. I, I saved it. I shared it. A few other people repinned it. But for some reason, I have to take it down. I go back to my pin. And I have a button up here somewhere, delete, edit, delete. I, for some reason, I have to delete it. Okay, I deleted it. The bad is if someone reshared it, you cannot delete that one. You cannot delete the copy of things that people have shared. So if you shared something and, whoops, I wasn't supposed to, and someone already repinned it, I can't take it away from their Pinterest. I can ask them, please remove it, and they might. But what Pinterest does is it, it puts that content up online, and if you want to take it down, it's a bit difficult to take it down. It goes out and spreads around, and usually we want that. We want my pin to be found by more people and shared by more people, but sometimes there's a mistake. And it's a big mistake because then we can't take it down if other people have shared it. That's out of our control. Yes? Um, my first question is, um, can you see all the uh, users that your pins re pinned to? Like, do you know where your content is going? Yes, uh, a couple of places. One in analytics. You know, you get your all your data about what's happening, so you'll see that there. You'll also see it up here on the notifications. News. It'll tell you, John shared this. John pinned it. Can I have one more question? Um, 
question too. Mm -hmm. um, I read somewhere that um, they said it was better to use the really long rectangular pins because it gets more tension. Um, I guess on the home feed or the home feed. And so I was wondering, like, a if you think that's true, and how you do that? You create the long pins as opposed to the smaller squares. There's a lot of tips here and there about Pinterest, and some of them are really cool, like that one. Although the problem is, it depends on your content. Like, I can't really create a big picture right here of this cape. Let's say it's my company. I can't really create a big one. Um, you know, the proportions of the doll, of the cakes, are that it ends at a certain point. But uh, if I do want a really long pin, like this is a longer one here. It's got this and this and this. How did they do that? It's longer than the rest. It catches my attention. So the point of it is, well, can I, is it more effective to, to share long photos? Yes, because they do stand out from the competition. How to make them? We can't exactly talk about that in this class because that requires a little bit of graphic design. It requires you in Photoshop or some graphic software for you to create a graphic that is made of three stacked together. Or so you often see also you know, this one is a graphic that is designed and cropped in a way that is tall and thin. It was probably shot wide and cropped, or it was shot vertically. I held my camera vertically, and now it's a vertical photo. But yeah, this stands out more than the smaller square ones because those, you know, a lot of them are smaller kinds of rectangles, but the ones that are taller do catch more attention. So there's no real like standard sizes for the pin, just it kind of depends on how like the dimensions of the picture or your image. Yeah, because if you're more of a horizontal picture, it'll it'll still you know show it, but it'll just be smaller. Um, so square pictures and tall pictures are what I would recommend. Not exactly dimensions, because it'll just scale. It'll shrink to the to fit in these boxes. But the the ones that are more vertical fit better, or the ones that are square fit better. The ones that are wide rectangles don't fit as well, because this is the character. See that one right there? That's a rectangular Well, Look how small it is. It has to shrink it into proportion to fit the columns. I've got four columns, so it has to shrink it down into a column size, which makes the height even smaller. Another way to share here, if you click this is the more powerful one. Pin from a website. Let's check this one out. Pin from a website. Right away it's going to tell you, a faster way to do this is to get the Pinterest button. I'm not going to do it, but the Pinterest button, if you follow the link, it'll tell you, attach the Pinterest button to your web browser. So whenever you visit any website, like my own website, I will have a button in my web browser that says pin it. And what it'll do is it'll automatically take the picture, take the link, put it in a pin, and send it. So that pin it button that it keeps telling me about, the Pinterest browser button, is a way for it to for you to share something from your own website quicker. You want to check that out on your own. What I'm going to do here is on the web address, go ahead and type in your web address. next. And what Pinterest will do is it will scan that page and it will scan and look for any pictures to share. Because Pinterest is all about pictures. I put the college's website and it says here's all the pictures that we see that can be shared. And other people have shared stuff from this website and Pinterest knows about it. So I can reshare that. But this is also to show people have been giving attention to this site. Anyway, sharing from your website. Okay, I want to share this picture right here. So if I click it, either the magnifying glass or the pin it, it says, okay, you're about to share this. Where would you like to put it? What description would you like to give? You don't need to put your web address here. The whole point of using this pin from website is that it, it, all, it attaches the link back to your website which is not editable by people. That's how you keep your your link on your pins. <clears throat> I'm gonna say happy students being happy and happiness 101. 
and I'm going to add that to one of my boards. And so I've shared this picture to Pinterest from my website, saved from SWCCD. If someone else comes across this pin and reshares it and removes my little joke comment here to something else, they can, but they cannot remove the link back to the college. So here then is another way to share. via your website. Let's say I'm on my website, um, I'm in the blog, I'm looking at a particular blog post, again I can take that address, share it here, it'll scan that screen and it sees these pictures. I'm going to share this picture into my board. The faster way to do it is Pinterest is telling you. Get the browser button. Another fast way is depending on your website. My website is set up in a way to share on Pinterest. You have to see if your website has that plugin or that widget or that app or whatever so that when someone visits your, your site they're able to share easily. We want to share this content on Pinterest because that link embedded is going to take them back to my website to buy, to watch the video, to request a quote, to hire us, to give us a phone call, to give us a review. What we've talked about on Pinterest applies to all the networks to various degrees. Sharing content enticing people to view it and to click it and to buy or subscribe or whatever and the more you do it the better you get at it. There are of course a few other nuances of Pinterest but we're running out of time for the day but um, based on what we've already talked about we have some ideas to start using it and again people come to these classes and they want to know exactly what should I share you know tell me exactly how to get followers I, I can't exactly do that because for a whole class, what I say won't apply to everyone. Maybe for half, maybe for 75%, maybe for 10%. Because sometimes people come in here with a certain kind of business and a certain kind of presence online. So hopefully in general terms that we've talked about, you're understanding it and using it, and it's up to you to create the content. I've given you a lot of tools and concepts and such, but it's still about you. It's content. Content is king. That's the mantra of social media. Content is king. That picture is going to get me sales. That video is going to get me sales. That witty comment is going to get me sales. The content itself. The content itself is going to get me followers. More followers mean eventually then more conversions. Um, general questions on what we've talked about on Pinterest today? Yes. Yes, once we've got these followers, you know, we'll get a notification up here that tells us all our followers. Um, let me just check with a person here. I went to Trucs de Cuisine, and they've got 127 followers. So I will get a list of all my followers when I get followers. They'll all be listed here. I can follow them back. I can go to their accounts. I can uh, comment to, comment on their content, like their content, interact with them, get them to know that I'm a real company with a product that they would like. I don't really want to just directly send them a message and say, hey, check this out, buy this. That's spam. You get those, you don't like it. Other people get that, they don't like it. You want to be more organic. You want to follow back your followers, perhaps. 
you want to you want to follow people to get follow backs then when you've got these followers nothing's to stop me as a company to go to Susan's pins and click her pin and add a comment Susan will then get notified pictures bakery commented I'm not really gonna say buy this I'm gonna say that looks great here's our version of it you know, something like that to be more like a person how do you deal with people in real world to convince them of something you don't shove something in their face you convince them of something interaction social media being social and that's why you want follow you can do that on Twitter you can do that on Facebook Google Plus Pinterest Instagram all the networks you just do it this way in Pinterest and you do it a slightly different way on Twitter and so forth any other general questions yes I heard that Pinterest does um, direct direct purchases for I think it's either Etsy or Shopify. Not as much as I would like, but yes, there are. Uh, you will be able to do direct sales in time. They're still kind of testing it to some degree. Um, I, for example. Uh, requested the beta invitation for that sort of thing and I still haven't gotten an update about it but they're doing it for the big companies like uh, you know Martha Stewart and Travel Channel and such and eventually us little people will be able to do it a lot easier but they're you know they're still testing it and eventually what we'll have is directly from a pin we will have a button that says buy and on Pinterest without leaving the safety and comfort of Pinterest I'll be able to buy it at that moment at the moment our closest our good enough solution is that we've got a link back to our website where the actual cart is at by sharing it via website upload is fine but usually we're doing it via website because that will have the link embedded and cannot be removed by people when they share it any last question all right so just to show you very briefly if okay this account I actually don't want it I want to delete it and do it with my real account it's somewhere here under settings you go back to your logo at the top right settings and you'll have a delete button somewhere I think all the way at the bottom somewhere apps uh, privacy account deactivate account right there you don't have it all the way at the bottom they have it higher up so it is in the business account basic section of settings deactivate in most of these networks, you click deactivate, and most of them give you a grace period, actually. Usually about 30 days. You told it to delete it. Most of them actually don't really delete it for 30 days, just in case you want to get come back, which is convenient. But if you click to deactivate, it eventually does go away. And there it is, under settings. So that's it for the moment. Uh, again, we're going to have spring break next week. In two weeks, we'll have part two of the class. Friday, same time, same day and such. And uh, we need to enroll and all of that, and you'll get a new syllabus and, and all of that. All of the things that I've been talking about, of course, have been recorded. Check out the videos to get a recap. And um, that's it for, the, for now. Hope to see you in two weeks.